Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good noon almost. It's almost noon. Uh, happy to be in Amsterdam. And uh, I'm here to talk about Minikube with you. Uh, first of all, who am I? My name is Medya Gazizadeh. I've been maintaining Minikube since 2019. I have released 86 versions of Minikube out of 140 total Minikube versions. I'm also a software engineer at Google slash manager. Uh, what is Minikube? Uh, by show of hand, who here has used Minikube? Does everybody almost? I think I, most of the people, their hands were up. So I don't think we need much uh, intro to Minikube. Uh, in this talk, we're just going to go through years of my experience as, as a Minikube maintainer, going through a kind of like a history of Minikube to uh, the latest news of Minikube, which is Minikube GUI. Uh, Minikube is a tool that quickly sets up a local Kubernetes cluster on popular platforms such as Mac OS, Linux, and Windows, with a special focus on developers, application developers, and the new Kubernetes users. And our own survey data confirms that as well. 42% of our users are the ones who use Minikube to develop applications. Whenever I go to KubeCon, people recognize Minikube with the emojis. Like, oh, that's the one with the emojis, right? So it's like, yeah, yeah, that's the one with the emojis. And who are the people behind these emojis? Other than me, there's Stephen Powell. Uh, there is uh, Anders Bjorklund, Predrag Rogovic, and honorable mentions of previous maintainers, Dan Lauren, you probably know his name by Chang from Chainguard, and Thomas Stromberg, and more than 800 individual contributors. Thank you to all of them. Uh, Minikube started with a GitHub issue in 2016. So the idea was setting up Kubernetes is hard. Uh, can we have something that just users just set it up because you don't you don't need a, most people don't have a Linux workstation. They just want to play with Kubernetes. That was the original GitHub issue. And Dan Lauren uh, responds like, "Hey, I want to take this issue. I want this," and he actually said. I have a physical Windows machine under my desk. I could use this as a test lab for that. And the reason he said that, because Minikube, uh, the design of Minikube is you use, a, at that time, use a virtual machine to start a Kubernetes cluster. And virtual machines could not be tested in Prow or in a container or a regular testing. You have to have actual physical machine that supports virtualization. It, at that time, in the cloud providers, there was no nested virtualization. Uh, so you could not even use a uh, cloud provider at that time. But there's a uh, uh, tweet by Dan Lauren that says, me seven years ago, treat your build system like production systems. <laughs> I mean, that's me today. But seven years ago, he was talking about his um, computers under his desk. These are actually the real pictures of those computers that Dan Lauren initially was under his desk. Unfortunately, we lost this um, uh, test lab to COVID, like maybe 15 seconds of silence. <laughs> uh, and the reason we lost this, because you could not go to the office to do things with them, because they required manual interventions, like restarting them, changing the cables, stuff like that. So they just all dead. Um, we still have them. Uh, the, the Jenkins machine that were hooked up to them, this Jenkins machine is still running. Uh, the first release was in May 2016. And fast forward 2023, 1.8 million line of Golang code. And this does not include the website or a documentation code or comments. 1.8 million line of code is the Minikube project, just a repo. The vast support metrics for popular platforms uh, uh, and CPU architectures, and all the drivers that you could have. One of the advantages of Minikube is it will meet you where you are. If you do not want to use Docker, you could use any other virtualization technology as your driver. And we also have some special drivers, such as bare metal or SSH driver. And the green ones are the ones that we have integration tests with, and we officially support them. Of course, Minikube also gives you the option of specifying your runtime which is, could be container D, cryo, or Docker, uh, despite the, uh, Kubernetes taking out Docker from their official code base, and also the CNIs. Uh, I was talking in a meeting that I said Minikube is just not, not one project, it's a sun with an orbit of projects. And I try to visualize that 
sentence in this uh, slide. And Minikube uh, is like a, if Minikube is a sun, the top one is the Minikube ISO. This is, is uh, part of Minikube code, but we hope to take it out of Minikube code and make it its own separate project. This is just enough Linux for Kubernetes. It's a handcrafted Linux distro that we added kernel module one by one through the past seven years. We just only added the modules that we needed just to run Kubernetes. And we, uh, we made it work for ARM64, for x86, different platforms. And there's a whole build process and build uh, automation around that. We hope to take it out of the Minikube repo, but that's one of the main uh, Minikube's uh, work streams. The other one is the machine drivers. This one is the, if you guys remember, uh, you, many of you might not remember, there was this thing called mach Docker machine seven years ago or six years ago by Docker. It was a library that Docker created to create VMs. And Minikube actually used that driver. The problem was Docker stopped contributing to that project, uh, deprecated in 2019. Uh, and Minikube actually forked that project and kept it alive. So we still use a Docker machines lib to create all kind of virtual machines in Minikube. And that project is a separate from Minikube code base, but officially Minikube is the only user of it or maintainer of it. Another work stream of the Minikube's orbit is uh, the official add-ons. You might know that Minikube has more than 20 add-ons and we officially uh, maintain some of these add-ons, like AutoPause, Storage Provisioner, GCP OS, GVisor, and uh, those are all another work stream of Minikube. The uh, test infra tooling, uh, we're gonna talk about that in a different slide. We transformed the infrastructure, and unfortunately we cannot use Prow, because Prow only supports testing in a container, and Minikube wants to be tested in a virtual machine or a hypervisor. So we developed our own test infrastructure tooling for that, that involves uh, GitHub Actions and self-hosted Jenkins agents in different clouds. And we also, another set of Minikube projects is Minikube uh, maintainer tooling. You're gonna learn about some of those toolings, such as GoPoke, Flake Rate, CSAT, Triage Party, and other tooling. The other work stream is the benchmarking tools that we have developed about three or four main benchmarking tools for Kubernetes. And they actually use it in, in some other projects as well, but they're mainly used for Minikube's development. And Minikube website is, is its own project. Uh, it's, it's in the Minikube code base, but it's like it's really its own effort that goes with Minikube GUI, which we're gonna see a demo of it today, and set up Minikube, which is the Minikube's official GitHub action. Other than that, the orbit that we talked about, which was internal part of Minikube, there's external projects that Minikube depends on. The main one, of course, is the uh, uh, hypervisors, all of the hypervisors. Hyper-V, VirtualBox, KVM, KMU, all the good ones. And Kubernetes upstream. Whenever Kubernetes changes something, we have to adopt. When they take out Cry Docker, uh, sorry, uh, they take out uh, Docker from their code base, we have to adopt. When they change something in Kubelet, we have to adopt. Uh, and then CryDockerD, since Kubernetes 124, we have been depending on CryDockerD to continue support for Docker runtime in Minikube. Docker runtime is very popular because it provides you the fastest way to build your image directly on Kubernetes, and we continue supporting that for our users. Kube ADM, uh, kind, uh, we use the kind base image for Docker driver. Cryo, uh, Mavi, uh, build root, podman, container D, Lima's socket VMnet, and uh, kudos to uh, Lima uh, that helped us to uh, provide KMU driver, CNIs, and uh, and that goes to the next slide. The, during past few years that I've been uh, maintaining Minikube, if you ask me what are the simple uh, principles that you follow, are this thing, this is the ones that I follow myself. Empathy and inclusion, open source, backward compatibility, and for the coding part, I follow XP and Yagni, which is extreme programming and you're not gonna need it. Those are like uh, principles that I follow for Minikube and I, when I do the code review, I've been following that past few years. And uh, this is the transformation of our test infra. I'm not gonna go through the slide, but we massively invested in our uh, 
in improving the test infrastructure for Minikube, we have more than 46 self-hosted agents in five different clouds. That includes clouds like um, uh, Equinox or Max Stadium, which is to actually physically test Minikube on, 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 on those machines. We have a full list of the integration tests in our website that is automatically generated too. So state of Minikube in 2019, this was actually the real uh, uh, GitHub issues, and also this was the Minikube notes. Uh, we have a meeting called uh, mini, meeting called Minikube Roundtable. This was the subtitle for uh, meeting: burning the legs of the developers since 2016. This is real. One day, I, when my manager was telling me, "Oh, my laptop is fan is always on," and one of the other maintainers, Thomas Stromberg, he had to ask, uh, "Are you running Minikube?" Like seriously, like that was so sad that we had to ask people, "Are you running Minikube?" When the laptop's fan was going on. It was this, uh, very disastrous. Uh, so we invested in developing tools, generating flame graphs. Actually, those uh, tools are open source. You're going to see the link for them in the end of this uh, presentation. And we identified how to uh, conquer the CPU usage of Minikube. The left one is the CPU usage of Minikube over time. And the right one is CPU usage of Minikube compared to other tools. I know this is so small to see, but this is not the uh, point of this uh, talk. You could see the full benchmarking on Minikube website. Simply go to Minikube website, go to benchmarking section. You'll see all of them in a bigger, nicer way. Another thing that happened in 2020, uh, we reduced the Minikube start time significantly. Uh, that uh, it was the same time that we introduced the Docker driver and the unified preload images for all driver. So all drivers of Minikube became much faster, 86% faster. Uh, and uh, that, uh, today actually this is about 19 seconds, but this is in 2020, that was 21 seconds. Uh, as a part of this effort, we developed two tools, Slow Jam and Time to Kates. Uh, sorry, uh, Slow Jam uh, helps you to graphic, uh, uh, visualize the, the stack trace for your Go application. And time to case helps you to identify and measure your Kubernetes creation um, performance in different categories. We have identified about six categories uh, uh, and of, I'm going to link to all of these projects in the end of slides, both time to case and slow job. That helped with making Minikube start faster. Another effort that happened in 2020 uh, and 2021 was automated benchmarking. Every Minikube PR, okay, let me tell you a story before I tell you why we did this. We made all of this work to make Minikube faster and nicer. We merged some PR that made it much worse. And uh, we thought, oh, we have to stop that. We did all of that work to make it nicer. And, then, and so we developed a tool that when you make a PR, it comments on Minikube PR and says, hey, this PR is going to make Minikube two seconds slower or two seconds faster. So we know exactly if the PR are making Minikube slower or faster. Uh, and those benchmarks are automated. And they, all, they go through daily, weekly, per release. And this is an example of it. In 2021, Minikube goes through uh, being used by many other products, such as Scaffold, such as Cloud Code, such as many other tools, uh, Cloud Shell, uh, many other pro products uh, that use Minikube as an embedded tool. So we had to invest in uh, embedded tooling, stuff that machines need, not humans. For example, JSON output. So every Minikube command has a JSON output, or something called schedule stop, that you could say, hey, Minikube, do this task five hours later or an event uh, mechanism that you can parse Minikube's events in a step format. You could say, oh, there's a step one, step two, step three, so the machine could tell if Minikube, uh, what step of the progress Minikube is. We also added auditing feature for Minikube, so you could audit who did what, if there are multiple, uh, multiple users are using Minikube at the same time, you could see who did what. The advanced weight logic, dash dash weight, watch flag license command, supporting C groups, uh, using in multiple different types of environments, and uh, machine readable uh, exit codes that actually, the Minikube exit codes are published to our website 
automatically. So if you go to our website, search for exit codes, you could see, oh, the exit code 79 means this, and these are the possible reasons. Uh, so this is like, every, we made everything usable for machine uh, usage. In 2021, we also invested in making Minikube work in the CI, even though that's not the main uh, usage of Minikube. Uh, there's a lot of demand for that. Uh, you could see examples of Minikube running in all of those uh, CIs, like Circle CI, Travis, Azure, GitHub, GitLab. And you could go to Minikube CI org on GitHub. We also invested in setup Minikube GitHub Action, which is uh, maintained by Minikube maintainers. Uh, so you, you can test your PRs and GitHub Actions against Minikube by simply adding mediagh slash setup Minikube. Uh, and there's uh, very good examples of actually building your uh, Docker image against Minikube on your PR. You could, I encourage you, if you are interested in that, go to this uh, repo, uh, uh, set up Minikube GitHub Action. There was a talk in 2019 uh, by Thomas Stromberg, Minikube bringing Kubernetes to the next billion user. Uh, uh, I was very brand new in Minikube at that time, but that was very inspiring to me, that talk. Thomas talked about uh, the, the next billion users that are gonna use internet, they're not gonna be English speakers. They're gonna be in Africa, in Asia, and countries that are developing. Uh, so it's like, if you wanna make Kubernetes available to them, you have to make it ready for them. You cannot assume they speak English. So we invested in a translation framework for Minikube. So you, without having any knowledge of um, coding, you could add your language to Minikube. This one is Japanese, but you can see other languages like such as French, Spanish. Um, I wish I had, we had Dutch, so we could add it for Amsterdam uh, KubeCon, but we don't, but you can easily contribute it to that. Just go to the Minikube website, search for translation, it will tell you how, exactly how to add your language to Minikube. Another th thing we invested in was including people in the triage process. Minikube has more than 8,000 GitHub issues, so it's very massive uh, user interaction in GitHub. So we developed Triage Party, and every Wednesday there's a nerdy party called Triage Party. You can join, and we will sit together, play, uh, play a groove video game of triaging Minikube uh, issues. In 2019 to 2021, we also overhauled or started the Minikube website. Before that, everything was in a uh, GitHub markdown pages, uh, not really usable for public, but now it, that's another milestone that happened in Minikube lifetime. And of course, we later added the Twitter, which is automated mostly, and the Slack channel. Another big thing that happened during my time in Minikube the past few years is uh, investment in developer velocity. So I talked about massively overhauling the test infrastructure. We have so many tests in so many environments and so many runtimes, different drivers. And we have about 300 integration test cases. The left one is the raw test logs of Golang. So let's say there's about, about 35,000 line of code. There's a one test that is failed. You wanna copy that test log and just see that. First, you have to identify that, which test was failed and then copy it. So we invested, I invested in making this thing called GoPoke. Don't tell me what it means. The name, maybe I'll tell you. It's, it's embarrassing, the name is just an embarrassing name. It stands for Go Pretty or Go Home. <laughs> <laughs> so the, I, I wanted to, so, so the idea is making Go, Go Lang tests pretty. So I just say Go Pretty and then I auto-completed myself or Go Home. <laughs> so the, the right one is GoPoke, so it just like makes it foldable to uh, categorize it by different um, uh, results. You can see all the filled one, all the, uh, all the past one, all the skipped ones, and you can copy them and also can give them permanent links to them. Um, and it also sort them by duration. You can say which test took longer. This helped us to squint less when we reviewed the PRs. This was one of the developer velocities that was a game changer to making Minikube uh, serve millions of users. As you can see, I like charts and I love charts actually. So another thing I invested in was developer velocity for test flakes. One of the problems that we had in Minikube, uh, I don't think there is a project that does not have flake tests. If there's developers here, 
uh, who maintain a project, do you guys show off your hand if you have flaky tests, like the tests that flake? Yeah, yeah, I see uh, encouraging amount of people. Um, so we have flaking tests that sometimes flake. You don't know if they're uh, actually real failure related to this PR. And the biggest part of it was we had to manually look at the history of the test. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, don't worry about that test. That's, I know that fails all the time. Uh, so that's not related to this PR. But it was such an uh, inaccurate thing to do and also very brain consuming for uh, maintainers. Uh, so we developed this tool to identify the flaky tests in Minikube against the head. So this tool will comment on the PR that tells you this test fails 2% of the time on master or head. And uh, so that means most probably it's related to this PR. But if it says 98% 98, 98 of the time it fails on the head, that means this PR probably didn't do anything that broke that test. So we actually have a per test, per environment of this flake race automatically uh, published to our website and also commented on the PR. That was another huge investment that I did uh, for developer velocity for, for Minikube. Another investment was uh, Minikube bot creating PRs for us. Do you guys remember the, the chart that I was showing you that was uh, external dependencies of Minikube? I'm sorry, it's like uh, scrolling so fast back, but this one. So any of these projects, when they bump something, we also had to bump something. And some of this were just like basically mechanical work that we had to do, and we had to be tested too. So whenever Cube ADM constants change, upstream Kubernetes, we had to bump things. So we just made 15 different automation that Minikube PR Minikube bot would make PRs for us. Actually, Minikube PR made more than 500 PRs. And we made it to push the code in midnight, so when we are in the office, it, it will be all, test results will be all ready for us to look at, and now we'll not uh, use our traffic uh, test infrastructure. We also uh, sync the Alibaba images uh, for users in China because they don't have access to, to American uh, cloud providers. Uh, and uh, building the ISO and Docker images to the PRs. And actually, um, I'm a little bit concerned because as you can see, my name is, is the first one, but Minikube Bud is getting there. It's, it's catching up to me, to, uh, uh, to the contributors, guys. Is, Minikube Bud is top six contributor in Minikube, more than 500 PRs. Uh, by the way, you can see all the main maintainers of Minikube. Yeah. One thing weird happened in 2022 that I thought I would never see that uh, as a Minikube maintainer, users asked us to have Minikube without Kubernetes and we delivered. <laughs> dash dash no Kubernetes. And the storyline of that, you know, Docker desktop license changes, a lot of people were using Minikube just merely as a Docker desktop replacement. And it's like, I don't care about Kubernetes. Can you start Minikube without Kubernetes? And we said, sure. <laughs> So that happened in 2022. Uh, 2022 was also the year of ARM64 for VM driver. We delivered uh, our ISO in, in, in ARM64, you know, because of the Mac M1 machines that are mainly uh, ARM64. So we could actually today use KMU driver uh, on Mac OS with, with ARM64. Well, uh, now we could actually talk about uh, GUI. I'm glad that we have time to, to, to look at uh, the demo of it. So Minikube GUI, uh, uh, this is the, how it looks like. It's just a tray icon. Oh my God, I should have closed these things before. Don't look at my desktop, it's so messy. Um, so this is Minikube GUI. You could like, uh, it stays in your tray icon like that, and you could use most of the Minikube features that I can you can restart it, you can stop it, you can pause it. I didn't talk about Minikube pause, but uh, this is another thing that happened in, in Minikube. We introduced this thing called pause. that actually pauses the Kubernetes, but not, the v, not your application. So if you deploy an application to Minikube, uh, if you pause Kubernetes, it will pause incoming requests. It will pause taking new applications on your Kubernetes. But, uh, so it will significantly reduce your CPU. 
uh, and you can delete it. And you can use the popular features such as Docker and right now if I do Docker PS, this is everything is inside Minikube. You could use the service command, you could mount a folder, tunnel, you could SSH to Minikube, um, and then you could do the dashboard, hopefully that works, and then the add-on, so you could enable different add-ons in Minikube. This is a new project that has been on the Minikube's milestone for a while, but we're finally happy to have the first release of it. Uh, and you could actually go to the repo, Minikube GUI, if you want to install it and give it a try. But be patient with us, this is like, and we hugely welcome your contributions. This is uh, written in C++ and Qt, so if you, if you are familiar with C++, come help us make this Minikube GUI better for, for the rest of the users. Um, so I would like to hear, uh, look at the, I, may, I like charts, so I made a chart of, this, this specific chart is from Dan Lauren. He maintained Minikube, he started Minikube. And you could see uh, 2018 is when he uh, retired uh, LocalCube. LocalCube was uh, a project that was used for bootstrapping Kubernetes. So we are using Kube ADM right now. Everybody uses Kube ADM. And you can see in 2016, we had uh, Rocket container runtime. But uh, right now we have Cryo and Containerity and Docker. But this is a, a, a timeline that I generated from the time that I started maintaining Minikube. Uh, the star ones are the more major changes. You could see the 1.2 is the when the translation framework happened, the registry add-on was added, uh, and auto setting extra configs. And 1.5 is actually a very interesting pra release. I like that release myself. Uh, that was we auto select the drivers for you. Before that, you had to say minikube start dash dash driver this dash dash that. You had to know what driver you want to use. But 1.5 minikube just auto selects it for you. It looks at your system and says, oh, that one's the best driver for you. I'm going to choose that for you. Um, uh, this release is uh, interesting, the 1.7, because that's when we uh, introduced a Docker driver uh, and a bunch of other things, such as dry run, uh, C groups. Um, this uh, version, 1.7 beta, that is also interesting. That's when we introduced pause. 1.8 is when we introduced the preload. By the way, you don't have to read all of that, but I'm including uh, all of this as an appendix, uh, so you could download it from the, from the KubeCon uh, PDF. The preloads were a game changer in Minikube. The, what does a preload do? Um, it's when you pull an image using Docker or any container runtime, it first downloads the image from the repository, uh, generates the, calculates the SHA, matches the SHA against that, and then pushes it into that and loads it into the memory. So that was time consuming. So we, we already that, did that and loaded it to a tar file and then uh, when Minikube starts as a sidecar, injects that into the file system. So both for VM drivers and Docker driver, we unified this preload mechanism that, that saves Minikube like more than, more than one minute in, in creation time. Also here we have more auto selection. So we auto select uh, memory for you. So before that, you had to say, uh, if, if before that, if, you, if, if your computer had a lot of memory, let's say you had 16 gigabytes of memory, uh, Minikube would uh, still choose the minimum one for you. But now, if Minikube says, okay, you have a lot of memory, you could be a little bit nicer, you could uh, give it a little bit of more extra room for, for, uh, for space. So it's based on what you have, you also select the CPU and the memory here. 1.9, we have this uh, user experience improvements, such as delete on failure. So Minikube, when you, one of the biggest problems in Minikube at that time, I remember, you start a cluster and it will fail halfway. And the, the, always the problem, the solution was delete it and start it again, it will, it will fix it by itself. So Minikube now would do it uh, for you, just delete on failure uh, and redo it for you when it was safe to do. Uh, 
Another important release was this one. Uh, this was a huge, massive uh, release for networking of Minikube that, uh, that helped us deliver multi-node because we introduced the Minikube's internal networking. And then we, there's some interesting add-ons such as Metal LB, but the CNI work in this release was massive. Uh, Minikube uh, release went through a major overhaul in this release. Um, see, in this release, it was when we introduced uh, GCP auth add-on, which is automatically, uh, b before that, you had, to you had to manually add the secrets to every pod uh, if you wanted uh, I, uh, if you want to use a private registry, you guys probably, if you are familiar with local development, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, like if you have a private registry, not a public one like Docker Hub, you have to manually inject the secret to your pod. So this add-on would help you to not do that. It will do it for you. Um, and this release, uh, 120, 112, is when we Docker driver went generally available. And we support more overlay FS. Um, 115 is when we uh, were working on the embedded use. Remember the slide about JSON and scheduled stop? Uh, this release is when we, uh, 117 is when we start working on ARM64. And there's a new driver called SSH here, uh, which means Minikube will SSH to a remote host and start a Kubernetes cluster for you there. Oh, and this is uh, one of the cute ones, auto pause. So auto pause is an add-on for Minikube that would automatically pause Minikube when it's not in use. Uh, that's that's, that's add-on is close to my heart because I care about battery life and stuff like that. Um, at that release, we also supported custom images for add-ons. Uh, and 118 is when we. Uh, improved WSL and Windows uh, for Docker driver. And this release, 116, is when multi-node went GA. 117 is auditing flag. So uh, if you have not tried this flag called dash dash user, uh, you probably don't need to use it. But if you are multiple users or multiple, uh, and you could see the audit of Minikube logs. If you just run Minikube logs, I think it's dash dash audit. It will show you who run what command and Minikube if you use the dash dash user. Um, so try that other thing. It's, it's fun to see. Um, that I, actually, this was about the same time that we automated the uh, GitHub logs issues. So when we when we, we user had created an issue in Minikube, we would ask them a million questions. Oh, can you give me the log of this? Can you give me the log of that? Can you give me a log of this? And most people will give up, and I, I understand that. So we created a command that will give us everything we need in one file, minikube logs dash dash file, that would get logs for all, everything, and put it in one file, you could attach it to a GitHub issue. Minikube 19 is when we introduced the minikube CP, or minikube copy, which you can copy a file into minikube very easily. That's much more intuitive than minikube mount. Most people now CP command or uh, co uh, copy command that's, uh, that's as opposed to mounting a folder into your, uh, to your uh, Minikube. Another uh, interesting thing that happened in 119 was the Minikube image command. Minikube image command helps you to build images without Docker. So if you, let's say you don't have Docker, uh, and we use BuildKit underneath, uh, which is an open source tool. You could just say Minikube image build, just like the same syntax as Docker build. Minikube image build dash T, tag it with your name, and then the path to your file. That was a very interesting release, actually. Anders worked a lot on that. Um, let's see what is interesting here. Um, here we add Polish translations. Uh, this is Europe, hopefully. Any Polish people here? Okay, Jikoya, Jikoya. Dobrze. Dzień dobry. We also added uh, some interesting command called Minikube version dash dash components. So you know Minikube it consists of not million components, but a lot, close to a million. I'm joking. Uh, but you can see the version of all of those things with Minikube version dash dash components. 
Um, Minikube 124, I remember I was talking about when the Docker desktop uh, license change happened. That's when the Minikube dash dash no Kubernetes happened. Uh, what else is important here? Oh, yeah, uh, so we fixed the GPU. I, I, I guess you might not know, Minikube has an add-on for GPU, so you could run Minikube on your NVIDIA GPU. I never use it myself, but I assume maybe Bitcoin miners or something like that. I don't know really who uses that. <laughs> Are you a Bitcoin miner? You're laughing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, 124 is when we sync with Alibaba that helped our Chinese users. Chinese users were like in misery before that, honestly. They, they went through a lot of difficulties. I realized there was a project that was forking Minikube code base and was changing where we push our code and it was changing into Alibaba. And they were maintaining that, this guy, for Chinese users. Like, well, we could just do it ourselves, like just sync our images to Alibaba so they could be not in misery. Um, 125, we also added binary mirror. That's for Minikube downloads a bunch of binaries if your binary is in a firewall. That's, that's also helpful, not only for Chinese users, but for corporations under like a very strict uh, networking that they cannot use anything public, whatever. Uh, sorry for saying whatever. I, I don't mean undermine your company's policies. We all comply. <laughs> I comply. <laughs> Google, listen to me. <laughs> um, um, what is important here? There's so many of them. Uh, one of the uh, saddest thing to do, uh, uh, hardest thing to do here was generating this chart, honestly. Is like, I wish we had less releases in Minikube because it was taking me so much time to make this uh, timeline. Uh, 126, we added the EBF, EP, EBPF support. So you could do all kind of EBPF things in Minikube. And there's actually a talk in the last KubeCon uh, Francis did a talk on using eBPF with Minikube. 128 is, of course, the log4j when it was affecting everybody. Um, it just was affecting a couple of Minikube uh, add-ons because Minikube uses Golang, doesn't use Java, but a couple of our add-ons were using log4j and was affected by that. Uh, we also had a new add-on over there called Cloud Spanner that you could emulate Cloud Spanner in Minikube. So imagine you don't want to pay for a Cloud Spanner. You go and just, oh, I want to uh, build an application using Cloud Spanner. You could just you know, download the new add-on called Cloud Spanner. 130 is when we had the QME driver as, uh, as experimental on Windows. And we have support for CS CSI volumes um, and improve the cry dockerty. Um, Oh, I forgot the 126 one. That's a very important one. That's when Kubernetes broke Minikube. <laughs> uh, Kubernetes actually broke many times, uh, and Minikube identified Kubernetes breaking. Uh, and, it's, and it's one of our roadmaps to add uh, Kubernetes testing with Minikube. Uh, this is the last slide. I promise I give you all of the links uh, uh, if you want to check out all of the open source projects that I talked about that Minikube created as a part of maintaining Minikube. This is it. And with that, thank you very much for coming to this talk. <laughs>